In today's video, we continue driving to the west through California. We are going to see the Imperial Sand Dunes, Slab City, the last free place in America, and Bombay Beach on the shores of the Salton Sea. All that and more coming up next. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV. My RV. Wherever I want to be Cause I'm free in my RV This video is sponsored by Custom Covers So, I arrived in California They took my lemons And here I am at the location of the Ogilvy Ghost Town Which I must say there's not a whole lot left of it and this is where we left off in the previous video, here at the Ogilvy Road BLM boondocking spot. My favorite type of desolate beauty. Well, this is where we are gonna stay tonight. Yeah, it is very windy. It is very nice, very level boondocking area here, very dispersed. As you can see, our veers give each other plenty of space, which is very nice actually. I can tell it is going to be a beautiful sunset. And check out the almost full moon. Not great for stargazing, but it illuminates the desert very nicely at night. As I said, it is a bit windy, so it may not be wise to fly the drone, but I'm gonna do it anyways. I mean, take a look at this place. Perfect place actually to try the spotlight feature on the Mavic drone. There it is, struggling a bit against the wind. I told you it was going to be a great sunset. Well, good morning. It's amazing, the sunrise. Here at the BLM land. Well, let's put the GoPro on the roof and hit the road. Got a busy day ahead of us.
Okay, here's the plan for today. We're gonna go to the Imperial Sand Dunes first. Then we're gonna go to famous Slab City. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drive around the Salton Lake, see that abandoned town of uh, Bombay Beach. And then I have a reservation at a, at a county park somewhere near uh, Palm Desert around that area. We are arriving at Glamis, which is pretty much the gateway to the sand dunes, and it is pretty much all RVs here. This whole area is actually called the Algodones Dunes. Imperial refers more to the area managed by the Bureau of Land Management, and sometimes they are called the Glamis Dunes as well. Let's go to this observation area called the Osborne Overlook. Wow, I have never actually been to the Sahara Desert, but I imagine this is what it might look like. I mean, so beautiful. Part of the chocolate mountains can be seen in the distance. Yes, in my mind, this is what a true desert should look like, right? Imagine a convoy of camels coming over the next sand dune. Yes, this is a place of incredible beauty. Too bad it is a little cloudy today. Okay, here we are. By the way, this is BLM land, 14-day camping limit. I don't know if it's tent camping or what have you. This is very, very surreal here. And the sun's coming out. I decided to put on my hiking shoes and go for a little walk on the sand dunes. It is kind of hard walking on the ridge it is almost like quicksand, I guess, or what I imagine quicksand would be like. Yeah, very surreal to be here. Well, maybe it's time to continue. Photo shoot, perhaps? Actually, before we go, a little flying is a must here. I continue on to the Imperial Valley. Our next destination, the infamous Slab City. Well, apparently we are below sea level here. Interesting. So many cows. Before we continue, let's put some expensive California gasoline here at the town of Brawley. It is almost a dollar more per gallon than in Arizona.
going north on the California 111. Very large agricultural area around here. This to the right used to be a rest area with dump stations and potable water, but it is now closed. I guess they didn't want the slabbers coming down to do their business here anymore. We pass by Calipatria. Here we are, coming upon Nyland, the closest quote-unquote real town to the slabs. And I think nowadays it basically exists because of Slab City. Let's explore a little bit. And so far this Nyland looks very much abandoned, you know, adorned with graffiti, what otherwise would seem like a pretty picturesque town, perhaps in a different era or an alternate reality. Some people actually find these places quirky and interesting. To me it's kind of sad that some parts of the country have decayed so badly. The building here with the Doric columns used to be a bank and a commercial center, built in the 1920s, when this was a wealthy town. Nowadays, it seems to be used for recycling. This is the road, the not very well maintained Beale Road, that will take us to the slabs. But before we continue towards Slab City, let me tell you about Custom Covers, our sponsor here. These steel covers keep your RV protected and out of the weather, and they come in a variety of colors. Available in 29 states with 2 to 4 week lead time. Call Lisa at 501 455 4442 and be sure to mention me, Traveling Robert, for a 5% discount on your RV and camper covers. Now, on to Slab City. That used to be the almost there sign, which has been painted over with graffiti. There is a Salvation Mountain on the right, which I think I am going to save for last. Let's check out the information booth here. Hmm. Welcome to Slab City, where the only rule is respect one another and dogs and earth and all that is. Hmm. That's a good rule to live by, if you ask me. Let's check out this other booth. Hmm. It doesn't smell very good. Interesting. Let's continue exploring. We'll leave uh, Salvation Mountain for last. Oh, we, are in, we are in Slab City. Here to the right is the range, but I want to go to this area called East Jesus first, which is uh, this art installation with all these sculptures made from recycled material or junk, basically.
According to the Book of Knowledge, aka the Wikipedia, East Jesus is an experimental, sustainable and habitable art installation. And here we are. Let me figure out how to park with the rig in tow and uh, let's explore. Hmm, that was pretty good, huh? Even one of the guys who live here congratulated me on my RV parking skills. But I think it was just luck. This ever-changing art installation here was founded by one Charlie Russell, who worked in the tech industry and one day packed all his belongings and came here, back in 2007. He had two art cars that he had built for Burning Man and slowly but surely started surrounding them with sculptures, built with whatever he found laying around. After his death in 2011, the curation and expansion of this place has been supervised by a foundation. Let's enter the sculpture garden here. And check out the sign. I bet you someone tried to sue them at some point. With the Volkswagen. Well, he was telling me the artist is right here. That this uh, used to be his Volkswagen for many years, and then he made it into this piece of art here. Okay, let's go all the way to the end here. Well, there seems to be a train passing nearby. Let's check out this uh, structure here. Hmm, there is someone up there. Well, I just realized this was actually someone's home, so I apologize to the resident for trespassing and he was actually very nice about it. So far, the people of Slab City, at least the ones that live here in East Jesus, they've all been very nice and welcoming and well-spoken. And there's a kind of peacefulness, you know, very relaxed, very zen. And while some of the stuff here is really far out original, some others uh, are still a work in progress, I guess. Some of it I just don't get, or maybe I'm just really bad at art appreciation, who knows. Okay, I must admit, the Cadillac is pretty neat, but see? Some of the stuff is really out there. And here it is, the iconic and constantly growing TV wall, built by photographer Flip Cassidy. I'm uncertain whether the newer additions are still Cassidy's work or a collaborative effort. That's pretty interesting. 
I believe this VW bus is one of Charlie Russell's original art cars. Parked right here next to the bottle wall. Well, all this is very neat, but we must continue. Very cool, this um, East Jesus. Yeah. Actually, to me, the most uh, shocking aspect of Slab City so far is the amount of trash everywhere. How can people live that way? Anyways, here we are at the range. Hello there. Well, hello everybody. This is the famous range where you know, every Saturday they have uh, concerts here. Well, more than a concert, I think it is supposed to be like a talent show. And everybody is invited to participate. It is supposed to be a lot of fun. Share your talent. We have a donation box. Let me tell you a little bit about the history here, the short version. This used to be a military installation during World War II, and when they dismantled it in the 60s, the foundations remained, hence the slabs. Then some workers from a chemical plant moved here shortly after, and the rest is history. Now all kinds of people live here because it is basically free the last free place in America, some seasonally, some more permanently. Hey, check it out, Minitini's twin is here. I can't believe there is another Micro Mini exactly like mine parked here. Here we are, this is the entrance to Slab City. Got a t-shirt from these guys here. And there's the, the welcome sign. Well, before we leave here Slab City, we're going to visit this uh, work of art called uh, Salvation Mountain. Let's check it out. Okay, good thing I parked outside. Sunrise to sunset. Well, here we are. Salvation Mountain. Well, I'll wait until they finish and maybe I can take a selfie here. Well, here we are, Salvation Mountain. Let's walk to the top. By the way, we were supposed to stay on the yellow painted path. This was built, created by one Leonard Knight, a resident of Slab City. He started building the mountain back in the 80s, but actually the first mountain collapsed. So this is the second mountain, built out of adobe and straw and, and paint. Lots of latex paint. Leonard Knight uh, died in 2014 at 82 years old. But his work continues here, as they keep repainting and expanding his creation. So 
Salvation Mount. And of course, there is many teeny. And I am up here on the top of Salvation Mountain. Let's continue exploring. Let's get back down. Maybe I should tell them about these broken steps. Let's go into this other area here that has all these rooms. Some areas are off limits here probably due to construction or repainting. So intricate in here. Fascinating. Mountain, this place is incredible. I think it is it is time we continue our journey. There it is, Slab City, like you've never seen it before from up high. Having some fun here, flying around. There's the plaque, you know, to make it official. Well, let's go. Children, cover your eyes. We are back in Nyland and now we are going to turn north here on the eastern shore of the Salton Sea towards Bombay Beach which according to the sign is 17 miles away. Of course, we were pretty close to the Mexican border, so we encounter another one of these border patrol checkpoints. Well, 
This is the town of Bombay Beach. One of the first things uh, you notice as you arrive here is that it smells a little fishy. You know, I was really hungry coming here and I kind of lost my appetite. At least for a little while. Check that out. Check that out. Is that some kind of rocket? Definitely some kind of fighter planes uh, flying information out there. Well, let me tell you a little bit about the Salton Sea, which was created pretty much by mistake. Big screw up at the beginning of the 20th century when one of the canals that controlled the flow of the Colorado River was overwhelmed and water spilled into the Salton Basin for two years. Two years it took them to plug the hole and by then what was previously a dry lake was now wet again. Nowadays it is once again kind of an environmental disaster here. The high salinity from agricultural runoff and the toxicity has caused many of the fish to die. It's crunching under your feet. The crunchiness under my feet is apparently salt left behind by the receding water. It is actually kind of sad. This was probably very pretty at one point in history and still kind of is in a weird way. By the way, it's not all bad. A lot of bird species thrive here under these conditions. I mean, it's not like a disgusting, horrible smell, but it is uh, not pleasant uh, for sure. In some other time, this must have been like a nice beach with umbrellas, lounge chairs, and now just this barren land. Yeah, definitely, there's uh, some animal byproducts in this sand, for sure. Yeah, this may have been like a like a marina or something like that at some point. But the water level was much higher. I don't know, somehow these ruins have like a touristy feel to it. Like the rest of the town is in shambles, but they left here. They left this here for us to see, basically. I mean, because people live here, obviously. Let's just check this one out real quick. Oh boy. <laughs> Scared the crap out of me. The Salton Sea was a booming touristy area during the 60s, but flooding during the 70s and the salty irrigation runoff from the nearby farms contaminated the water and by the late 90s pretty much had killed the inland sea. I came here expecting to find a deserted town, but the sad part is that people actually still live here. Like Slab City and the rest, this whole area is apparently a place that California would like you to forget that it exists. 
Very few people actually have heard of this forgotten corner of the Golden State. Well, according to this, we are 300 feet below sea level. By the way, there are a bunch of state parks here on the eastern shore of the lake, where you can camp if you don't mind uh, the foul stench. Actually, maybe in this area it's not that bad, huh? As I enter the Coachella Valley, I feel I just came out of a dystopian movie, a strange alternate reality. And if it wasn't for copyright, I would play you some of my favorite California tunes, you know, Tupac and the Mamas and the Papas come to mind. But instead, you're stuck with my own California road trip tune, which is not that bad, huh? Well, in the next video, we'll explore the nicer areas of California, the Palomar Observatory, and I'll even dip my feet in the Pacific Ocean, completing the westbound portion of my cross-country road trip. If you have enjoyed traveling with us, make sure you are subscribed and check out my other videos. Also, share it with your friends, spread the word and leave me a comment. Now, if you really, really liked it, you have a chance to show your support at patreon.com slash travelingrobert. As always, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road.